I'm Lisa Tipton from Deaf Dog Rescue of America. And I'm uh, Mark Tipton with Angel Dogs Training and also Deaf Dog Rescue of America. The Deaf Dog Ranch is 10 acres and we're located in Acton. Um, we're in the hills of Acton at 4,000 feet in altitude. And um, I don't know if you can see the view behind me, but we get treated to this view and a gorgeous sunset every night. And uh, it's desert beauty and it's nice and quiet up here. Um, Basically, you know, when we when we found out that this place was empty, and and it's a great place for the dog, it, it, the dogs. It, we have a an indoor kennel building, that's indoor outdoor, um, 24 kennels, um, and and people area. So we have laundry facilities and grooming facilities, and uh, we also have uh, 16 outdoor kennels. So we have capacity for uh, 46 dogs, and we are always at 46, um, just because we're. You know, there, there are so many dogs out there and not enough places for them to go. So we literally adopt one out and we've already, we're already looking at the next one on the horizon who, who needs to come in. And there's usually a bit of a waiting list here. We didn't really know there was an overpopulation problem until we adopted our first dog. And I asked for seven years and then we finally got her first dog out of a shelter and she was a pretty wild uh, Chesapeake Bay Retriever Springer Spaniel mix and because she was so crazy we, be we, we learned about rescue and we adopted our second dog and um, I started volunteering for that rescue and then in 2005 we went independent um, and we started rescuing dogs on our own and then in 2009, basically, we took our first deaf dog. We were operating a, a nonprofit, uh, low cost mobile spay and neuter clinic. And we had a deaf patient on, on the clinic who got out of her home and ended up in the shelter, and no one would take her, and the owners wouldn't pay to get her out. So we didn't want to leave her there. And I went and got her out of the shelter and brought her home. And she turned out to be an amazing, amazing dog who taught us so much and really taught us how special deaf dogs are. And we were hooked, and, and that's how, how we came to be. And then from there, um, we adopted a couple of deaf puppies that she mentored, and, and she taught us how to communicate, and then we taught the dogs. You know, it's, it's hard to adopt dogs out that don't have any training, so, you know, that was our, our mission in life, to, to make them adoptable and then find them fully screened, really wonderful forever homes. Our dogs come from all over the country and we focus primarily on dogs that are in unsafe situations or in kill shelters and we get them here by volunteer transport, sometimes they get flown to us. Um, we assess them when they get here, some of the dogs you know, we're, that we commit to we know are going to need rehab, some of them are just going to need training, gent basic obedience training because people think deaf dogs are stupid for some reason. And they're not dumb, they're actually smarter than hearing dogs are. And so we provide them with, you know, enough skill to, you know, to find their forever home and, and sell themselves to their owners when they get here, you know, a, a, a prospective adopter. Um, and then we, we get them listed and they go out on, you know, 37 different listing sites and get a good audience. and. Um, hopefully, hopefully somebody falls in love with a picture, you know, because our pictures are really wonderful. And um, then they come up and meet the dog, and and and, and the rest is, is history. We do Mark does dog introductions um, with a professional trainer. That means you know most of the time that we know the dogs are going to be compatible because they're introduced properly, and they already have training skills. So it's not like you're putting a wild thing into somebody's house. <laughs> so. Uh, deaf dogs, it's all just about hand signs, facial expression, and body language. 
That's how a deaf dog, all dogs learn by body language and, and that's how they communicate. So if you're using your body to let them know what you want, they know exactly what to do. Well, we were living in Santa Clarita in our suburban dream home and we had 12 dogs. Two were ours and um, the others were all foster dogs and deaf dogs and you know at some point you know you, it was taking both of us 24 hours to keep everybody happy and keep everybody you know having enough exercise and enough time outside and I looked at Mark one day and I said you know if we're going to continue to do this we really need to find kennel property because there was such a gap in rescue you know with the deaf dogs there was no one else to take them at that time there really wasn't another deaf dog rescue in, you know, that, that had a facility or, you know, there were a few indie rescuers in the country, but we were one of a very small handful of people. And um, we started looking and we knew this place was empty. So we offered to rent it. And of course we had to clean it up first, but um, we, when we moved up here, we started with the 12 dogs that we had and we filled up here within about, three to four weeks. All 24 kennels were full. So probably one of the most um, one of the most memorable stories is that we had a little guy come in here um, named Bowie and he came from his breeder and, and his breeder is um, she, she is working cattle dogs so his parents were working cattle dogs so he's a very drivey little dog and even for us and even for our dogs who are very used to having foster puppies in the house he was pretty challenging wasn't he Mia you remember him <laughs> and um, he just was super smart and super active and took a licking and kept on ticking and he was gonna need somebody who was gonna keep him in line and continue on with his training and give him a job and um, Nicole Wild, who is also a positive reinforcement trainer who takes our listing pictures here, posted his listing picture on her page. And one of her friends, Melissa Millette, who runs a, a great show uh, called The Ultimates in Toronto, Canada, um, was interested in him. And she really liked that we really, really know our dogs here because he was living in the house with us as a foster puppy. And um, he, she was used to, he was used to small dogs, he was used to 100 pound dogs, he'd met the cats, you know, so he really fit in with her pack and she wanted him to work in the show. And if he didn't go to a home like that, um, we had another family that was really, really interested in him, just, you know, your typical dog owning family. And I said, no, um, you're gonna come back to me in six months tearing your hair out. There's no way that I'm going to let you adopt this pup. Come with me. I have another litter of, you know, a couple of litter mates here that are also deaf who would be so much better for your family. And then we flew Bowie to Melissa. And a couple of weeks ago, he just did a halftime game for, for you know, a, a famous basketball team. He's, he's going to be the star of her show. Um, and he's still, you know, he's still a puppy. He's only, he's just over a year old. So, um, you know, it's really nice to watch her. Um, published stuff on Facebook and she sends me video of his new tricks and you know his his, dri his drive is making kids happy all over the Toronto area which really that that makes me happy every time I get an update from her. Well for me um, there's a lot of different dogs because they're all they all come in with different challenges. Uh, all dogs have different issues and so for me to watch them develop and learn, that is the best thing of all. Be able to get them a good home. Oh, you're talking about Precious? Yeah. Precious, precious. yeah, yeah. She was a, she was a big challenge. Uh, had to gain her trust. Uh, she did uh, end up bonding with one of our uh, kennel hands. And if anybody came near the kennel hand, she was very reactive, uh, so we worked on, on that, seeing that other people could be around that person and so forth. And it took a while to be able to get her there. Finally did. She was doing, she was doing a fantastic job. She was able to deal with, with uh, things going on around her because she was deaf and she, she, didn't, she was scared and didn't know what to do. 
we also have another dog here who's pretty remarkable. Um, his name is Fabio, and he just arrived from yeah. Florida about a month ago. And we offered to take him about eight months ago. He's a beautiful purebred Dogo Argentino, and he's about three years old. And he unsocialized in someone's backyard, and then he went to a rescuer. That rescuer did everything wrong. Second rescuer, you know, really tried. Tried to find him a foster home. Foster home couldn't keep him because they had to leave for a family emergency. Went to another foster home, didn't work out there. Then at some point in there, went to a trainer who used an electronic shock collar, which really screwed him up. So now he doesn't trust anybody. And he, he also, um, you know, he just kind of made up his own rules. He also has OCD. That's what happens when you try and shock a deaf dog. Um, or, 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 you know, it's certain breeds will react like that too. But he came in here, just everything in his life has, has always been removed from him. Um, he lunged at Mark with his teeth showing right off, right out of the car from Florida. Um, and he's, he's been here two months. He's, he, we, we, you know, we, he's doing really well OCD wise. He's fine with our kennel people. He's been through beginner's training class. He's learning not to lunge. He thinks it's funny, you know, he sits back and watch you, watches you react. And he knows now that there's a set of rules he's gonna to have to follow if he wants his person and he wants his person to watch TV with. He's gotta earn that. And to do that, he's gotta follow rules. And, you know, we're, we're, we're training him from the bottom up. And we had an animal communicator come and talk to him. He knew that she was coming before she ever set foot in the building. And from the day that she spoke to him, he's been like a completely different dog. So he's very, very smart. Probably one of the smarter dogs we've ever met. There's no such thing as a, a, a dumb deaf dog. They just don't exist. We've never seen one yet. But um, we hope to get him adopted, you know, which is something that, you know, everybody else was having trouble doing for him. But he's, he's adoptable, yes? He's made great strides. Yeah, in a very short period of time. Very short period of time. Well, the staff here that we have are very skilled. Uh, we are very lucky in that sense that we've been able to find some people that really know what they're doing, how to handle dogs. They've had past experience in this. Um, so they're very well versed in, in dealing with dogs and safety is always number one. So the kennel hands all know that and they all know how to handle the dog. Well, what would we like our future to be? I mean, I, there's a picture in my head that I, I hope, I hope, I hope it comes true. Um, we'd like to be self-supporting because it's very hard. It's very nerve wracking. It's very challenging to, to count on donations. Um, we, we do boarding now um, for other rescues and our adopters and also for our training clients, hoping to earn our own keep. Um, we hope to expand sometime in the next year. We'd like to, um, we'd like to procure the, cop the property above us, which is another 10 acres, it's fully buildable, and put up a second kennel building like this one, um, except a little bigger and newer, and um, uh, you know, also get our outdoor dogs, because we do have outdoor kennels here, which we don't like very much, get our dogs, everybody indoors, and also be able to provide more boarding um, which will hopefully get us to the point where we're 100% um, self-sufficient. You know, some, sometimes someone will say to me, well, I know I have a trip coming up in June, so I don't know if I should take my dog home in May. Well, that's okay, because we do boarding up here and we're very inexpensive for our adopters. Like, you're just not gonna find the rate that we're providing anywhere in the state, probably. Um, because we know your dogs, so they're easy for us to board and they don't mind coming back here because they, they're comfortable here, they know they're safe. So um, it's, you know, it's really easy for people to just drop off and pick up and know that we know what to do with their dog. Um, and Mark's training clients, he, he lets them know that we do boarding. But um, we, we, we still are reliant on donations and we have, you know, we have quite a few, we have a few um, really wonderful donors who you know know that we fall short every year like this year we've probably fallen shorter than ever just because every plumbing valve in this place decided to go in the last three months you know so that was thousands and thousands on plumbing and we still have a leak here somewhere but you know 
4,000 bucks for leak detection is not a can do. So, you know, we're, we're managing or um, like our patio cover that is, you know, kind of, you know, one of these days we're hoping to find a corporate sponsor who might want to come in and, you know, have the, the, the Ford dog patio or something, you know, the, the Ford adoption patio. You know, those, those are things that we, we, we hope for. We're not very good at asking sometimes, but there, there are all kinds of projects here that, that we need to expand and, you know, make things more comfortable for people to come and meet dogs. The best way to contact us is um, they can email us or they can go to our website, which is www deafdogrescueofamerica.org or we also have a Facebook page under Deaf Dog Rescue of America and you can send us a message. Um, there are a million ways to help. Um, we have projects going on up here all the time. Um, right now we're putting kennel like roofs, permanent roofs on our outdoor kennel so that our dogs are covered and have shade and a little bit more warmth and um, just the simplest things. I mean it's you know, it's monetary donations are great. We need Home Depot gift cards. We always are in need of tools and buildings, building materials here. Uh, we buy a lot of our cleaning supplies at Costco. Our dog beds come from Costco. Um, our meat for our raw food for our allergic dogs comes from Costco. Um, PetSmart cards, Petco cards, blankets. Um, you know, kids that you know are looking for a project can put you know, a notice on people's front doors or something. We're, we're doing a blanket collection. During the winter time, nobody wants to sleep on cold cement. Um, the dogs need all the warmth that they can get and some of them chew blankets up. So, you know, so, some of the dogs here can go through a blanket a day. Um, we can always use dog treats up here. We're, we're pretty well set on dog food, but um, dog, dog treats like, you know, bully sticks. We do rawhide bones, that kind of stuff. Um, there's, there's, you know, there's all kinds of things that, that people can do to help. And I think we have probably adopted about 400, close to 400 dogs into new homes. And we're very small. We, we keep it small and boutique style, you know, family style on purpose. It, it really, it helps us be more personal about the adoptions and get to know our adopters and match them with the dogs. That's really what it's all about is matching people with the dogs whether hearing or deaf, but especially for hearing dogs. We adopt nationally too, not just locally. Like I, I, it's, we're always happy when it's a local home because if, if a dog is more challenging, we know that they'll get more support because Mark's right around the corner. But I mean, even for a national adoption, if somebody has issues, you know, we'll have them come down to the ranch and, and work with the dog or, you know, we, we figure something out or we're on the other end of a phone or a text or an email for them when they need training advice. Like we make sure that we, we you know, we do a good job of supporting our adoptions because we do always take our dogs back. We prefer that they come back to us if for any reason someone can't keep a dog. But the whole goal is to keep the dog in a forever home. And sometimes you have to, little, have to work a little harder to do that. People assume that deaf dogs are dumb. They're not. Um, it, it, you have to flip your thinking over to nonverbal. They're so tuned in to their people that um, sometimes I feel like a Pied Piper in the house. We live with seven deaf dogs out of our 10 dogs. And um, if they could sleep touching us, they would. But they watch us very carefully for, you know, for facial expressions. And most of the time, they know what we want before we want it you know, before we, we know we want it. And um, people give up too easily. I keep saying, you know, I, I get messages from people like, I just don't have time to, to learn how to train a deaf dog, or I don't, you know, I don't know how. Well, I had to learn. You can too. That's, that's really my, my biggest message. When I'm training a deaf dog, um, it's just all hand signs, facial expression, body language. And I train them basically the same as I would a hearing dog to start off with. There's a few things that I have to change up to add a hand sign into that I would be only using a verbal cue for. But you, you're just consistent with the same hand sign. You can make up anything you want. And as long as you're consistent with it, the dog will know what you're asking him to do. The ultimate goal is, is to get the dogs uh, trained enough so that they are more adoptable to go into a home. Because we do provide here that if you adopt one of our dogs, 
that you can either take my beginners group class up here for free or you get two free in-home training uh, where I come to you and work with you and your dog to show you what to do and how to do it. But having a deaf dog is really easy because they can't hear you so they're always looking at you. You could be sitting there in your room watching TV and your dog's laying there. All of a sudden your dog just pops up to see where you're at. And then he says, oh, you're still there and lays back down and goes to sleep. That's because they want to know where their people are at. And, and so you don't have to have that worry about them wanting to wander off and everything else because they want to be where you're at. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, the easiest way to contact us is um, you can go to our website, uh, www.deafdogrescueofamerica.org. Um, there is a, an email address. There's also a mailing address. Um, there's a PayPal button for donations. Uh, you can also see our dogs listed for adoption there, and that's kept pretty current. Um, and, and see a, more of our story and our mission and, um, you know, more, more of what goes on and frequently asked questions and how, uh, how we operate and how, how it'll give you a, an idea of how we think when we accept a dog into our program. And, um, you know, we're, we're always in need of help. There's a big old PayPal button right at the top of that page. <laughs> <laughs> we're close to self-supporting, but we're not there yet. Um, and, and there's also a wish list and an Amazon wish list and, you know, a, a list of, of things that you can help out with, Costco cards, Home Depot cards, there's always something breaking here. Um, and we need tools. <laughs> but, um, and, and tune into our Facebook page. There's also a link to our Facebook page there. You know, when we see a lot of likes on the page, it encourages us and it, it keeps us smiling and it keeps us going.